In this episode, we're going to be looking at various content removal strategies to remove challenging objects like this light post and go from here to here. So hi again, Michael Voloshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Vibrant Shot. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to be looking at various ways that, that you know we can actually remove objects such as this light post from an image. Um, so some of this is going to require some of the features that uh, Photoshop CS5 and 6 have, which are the content aware uh, fill and um, other things are just you know sort of strategies that you can take uh, both in, in the post-processing phase but as well um, when you're actually shooting the image we're gonna look at a, an approach where we take an image that was shot during the same uh, session essentially shot from a slightly different vantage point and we're gonna use that image to fill in uh, some of this main body within the Colosseum here so uh, essentially, you know, we we're going from this original image to this cleaned up image. Uh, and, you know, we're going to try and get as close to this result as we can. Uh, probably took me about half an hour at least, maybe 40 minutes to actually remove that. So uh, some of these things, uh, you really have to decide whether or not the shot is worth doing. Uh, in this case, this is a particularly challenging uh, object removal for a number of reasons. First of all, we have so many different um, textures and areas that we're working with. So uh, in here, it becomes a little bit challenging because we've got you know a lot of, of detail and texture behind this light post. Uh, up at the top is actually pretty straightforward where we have the sky. So that's you know sort of the ideal case where you have a simple background that you're moving against. Then down here again, we've got some light uh, light trails. Uh, here we've got some uh, you know texture in the curb. And the real challenge is that we also have this shadowing that's going on. So if we're going to remove the light post, we also have to make sure that we remove these shadows. So I've uh, you know gone ahead and done that pretty well here. Uh, again, there's some shadows over here in the bottom portion that I haven't gotten around to removing yet because this isn't actually an image that I'm going to use. So uh, really, I just went through this removal for uh, demonstration purposes to show you what it's more or less going to look like in the end. But uh, if I wanted to actually clean this up and get you know a perfect result, it would probably take uh, close to about an hour to, to really do a great job of this. So since we have so much work to do, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'll usually do, uh, and you know, when, whenever we're removing an object like this, it's important to divide up your uh, removal into the different sections. So you can really just divide those by textures. And so obviously this is one kind of area that we're going to be removing. Uh, in the, the main body of the Colosseum is another portion. We sort of have this light stream area over here, or light trail area. And then we have this bottom portion here, and then we're obviously going to look at these individual shadow areas too. So uh, lots of things to do. So the first thing I usually try uh, when I have to remove an object like this is to use the content aware fill. So obviously you do need to have Adobe Photoshop CS5 or CS6 to use content aware fill. Um, so let's just see how we actually do with this. So first thing I'm gonna do is just create a, a copy of that layer. Uh, I don't really wanna be working with the background layer when I do this. So essentially we're gonna make a selection around uh, this light post and well, we'll see how we do. So let's just grab our lasso tool, just kind of roughly go around this into here. And you know, you can be a little bit more careful with this selection. Use the um, polygonal lasso tool. That would work pretty well for this since we have some straight lines, but that's good enough. Maybe I'll shift that over a tiny bit. Okay, so what we're going to do with that is just hit Shift F5. Um, if you're on a Mac book like I am, you do have to hold down the function key as well, so function shift F5. And then uh, you're going to bring up the fill dialog, just pick content aware from here, and um, click OK. And let's see how we do. So it's actually not too, too bad up here, but we see that, you know, these areas here, they just look like crap. Um, you know, pretty much all of the... Uh, all the detail here is gone. You've got this weird stuff happening in here. Uh, so content aware for this sort of thing is not really what you want to be doing. So for that reason, um, luckily I had the foresight to expect that this would be a little bit difficult to remove uh, using you know clone stamp tool or content aware. So what I actually did was I shot another image. If we just zoom out here, 
I shot an Im another image like this. Um, we have a little fellow photographer down here in the bottom, and as you can see, really the images are you know pretty similar, but they're shot at a different angle. So what I essentially did um, with this image was I actually moved over to the left side a little bit, and I shot so that I could essentially get you know the portion that's covered up here is sort of between these two windows. So I made sure that I have that snippet between the two windows to work off of. So basically what we can do, um, I've already made these selections over here, so if we actually just disable that, um, this is kind of the object that I selected, and just to do that all we really need to do is, uh, you know, make a, a selection, it doesn't have to be a very accurate one, so we know that we're sort of between this wedge here, uh, so we can just, you know, select that, hit Command J, that's going to duplicate out that section there, and, uh, and then we're going to drag that in. So I'm actually going to use the section I selected before just because I know that that worked nicely, uh, so again, we're just selecting this kind of thing here. Uh, in fact, what I can probably do is just... Uh, actually, no, we'll, we'll stick to that. So uh, I'm just going to drag this in. I'm going to select our Move tool. We're going to pull that into our uh, file here. I'm going to hold down the Shift key so it'll drop it, you know, more or less in the same location. And then, you know, as we kind of put this over top, we see that it's, you know, it's not too bad. Like, it doesn't look that far off. There's a couple of things that we're going to have to do to really massage this and, and make it look good. But... Uh, again, we're not too far off from creating something that works nicely. So, uh, what we can basically do for this, there's a couple of things that we can we can start with. So, what I usually will do is I'll turn the blend mode onto difference blend mode, just so we can see you know how we're sort of aligned. And essentially, with difference blend mode, what we want to see is we want to see as much black as possible, because essentially, uh, when you have perfect overlap, you should have black. Um, essentially everywhere. Now we're obviously not going to get a perfect overlap because you know we are taking something from one image and kind of moving it into the other image. So if we just zoom in here, we're going to just have to start using some transform tools to essentially massage this into place. So as we can see, we're not too far off. Um, we can just kind of nudge this with our keys to get a good starting point. So we see that this area is nicely overlapping now. Um, we've got a little bit of, you know, a couple of things that are off over here, but overall we're not too bad. So we're going to just hit Command T, we're going to use our transform tools, and we're going to just, you know, sort of scale this so that it gives us, you know, something that's pretty close. Again, we don't have to be super accurate because really we're only concerned with this middle portion where the light post is. So what we really want to ensure is that there's there's good alignment in that area. Um, everywhere else we're going to kind of blend out. So uh, if you're having trouble aligning this, sometimes it is better to zoom in. And we're just going to just get that there. And um, we've got a couple of things that we need to align there. So what we can do is scale down, I think, the bottom. Looks like it needs to be scaled a little bit as well. Something like that. We can also uh, use the skew option. So let's just see how that works. And I think we're going to actually going to backtrack on that. Let's just scale again. So I'm just right clicking to select that, and we're going to just scale it out. Because again, obviously, because I shot this from a different angle. Um, there are going to be some scale and distortion issues that we're going to have to deal with. So um, we see that we've got pretty good. This is really a fun process. So this is really the worst of it is just trying to get all this aligned. But again, we're focused just on this middle section. So as long as we can get that pretty close, um, I'm going to be pretty happy. And now let's just see where we are in here. And I'm not too concerned about this outer edge because we're actually not going to be using that. I'm really just looking at this center portion over here. And then if we need to, we can always use warp as well just to kind of align things in here as well. Get them as close as we can. You're obviously going to see a lot of yellow here because our actual post is here. So don't worry about getting that perfect. And I think overall that's not going to be too bad. I'm going to just use scale one more time to just adjust this down or up I should say to something like that and I think that's pretty good so let's just try that and we'll see how it works so let's go into normal blend mode so we're back into here and now we can essentially uh, add a layer mask on top of that so if we hold option down that's going to give us our black layer mask it's going to disable everything so really not doing much of anything right now and then we're going to use white brush. Obviously our flow rate is going to be, you know, 
pretty high. You can essentially just go to 100%. Uh, make it fairly soft. Uh, right now we're at, I'll just leave it as, as zero actually. And then obviously the width of your brush is going to be more or less the width of this post. So we're just going to start brushing in there. And this is not going to give us a perfect result just yet. But as you can see, it's not too bad. So uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet, isn't it? And there we go. So that basically gets rid of that post from the Coliseum itself, which is nice because uh, obviously with the content aware fill, uh, it looked terrible and really we were just trying to recreate something that, that was there, but you know the, system, the computer itself can't figure everything out. So here we actually do have the real Coliseum behind it um, without really doing too much work. All I had to do was spend uh, maybe you know 10 seconds recomposing my shot and then a couple minutes just getting this all aligned. So definitely you know a strategy that you want to be aware of while you're taking the picture because obviously if you didn't shoot this second exposure it's not going to work too well for you. So um, one thing we can see here is that there are um, a few small problems with this. We have this little lip up at the top here so what we can do for that is I can hit command T again I can just use our warp tool to try and pull this section at the top up a little bit just to kind of even out this line that's looking a bit better and then the next thing we notice is that uh, there is a bit of a brightness variance here so you know this is a little bit brighter so we can add our we can use our levels adjustment or our curves adjustment uh, I'm going to use levels in this case but it really doesn't matter which one and we're going to hold down the option key to apply it as a clipping mask to the layer below because we don't want to adjust everything we just want to adjust our uh, layer that we imported and then we're just going to slide this over a tiny bit, maybe to around there. And the next thing I want to do is um, take care of some of this yellow light that's here from uh, this particular layer. Uh, I just want to lighten that down. I think it looks okay here, but over here we got this random um, pop of yellow. So again, I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment. We're going to hold down Option and click down in between the two lines. We're going to select our yellow color, and we're going to just take down saturation here and we're going to take down maybe lightness a tiny bit and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this mask here I'm going to hit command I with it selected I don't want to apply it to this area because I think this area looks pretty good so we're going to select black as our color and or sorry white as our color and then we're just going to brush that into here so we just want to get rid of the yellow that was was up here and I think that looks pretty good so we're making progress here. Unfortunately, um, that was really the easy part of the removal. But again, it was easy because we had that second exposure. Um, this strategy will not work for wider points like this down here because obviously um, it will only work if there's an object um, obstructing another object that is farther away because obviously if we pivot to the left here um, think about how far I would have to step to get behind this post over here uh, I would have to essentially go out in the middle of the street and try and photograph this and then obviously we have to do so much warping uh, that it's really not going to work so it only works if there's an object like a light post or whatever it might be obstructing something that is further back because then every slight nudge to one side you'll be able to see a lot more of what's behind so with that done uh, essentially the next thing we're gonna do I'm just gonna create a uh, stamp visible area there I'm just gonna hit command option shift E and we're gonna have to deal with some of these other areas here so I'm gonna start with this sky over here just because it's really the easiest part to work with so let's just zoom into that area there and what I really want to do is uh, I'm actually going to use content aware fill for this but in order to make it a little easier on myself I'm going to separate out just this little snippet uh, between the top of the Coliseum and the actual light post so we're just going to use um, a polygonal lasso tool in there just to make a quick selection around the edge there because I don't want to be uh, selecting any of that essentially so let's just create an area like that and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use clone stamp tool to fill that in a little bit so uh, I'm just going to create a separate layer here quickly. Clone stamp, we're going to select light and blend mode. Um, you don't have to select light, but it just makes sure that I don't end up covering, um, you know, if I'm sampling from here, I don't end up getting some darker stuff um, moving over to the sides. Uh, it just works nicely that way. So flow rate really doesn't matter. Uh, just pick anything that works. Uh, and then we're going to just sample from both sides here. You don't have to be super accurate with this most of this is going to be covered up. The most important thing is we just create an area of separation uh, between the uh, the building and the light post itself. 
So there we go, that should be pretty much good enough. Let's just deselect that, zoom out. And I actually don't like that we have this really hard edge here, so let's just see if we can nudge this up a little bit. I'm just using the, the keys here. And you know, all this kind of little stuff we can fix later with a little bit of final clone stamp touch-up. So all I did was I just nudged this up, I selected the move tool, I have my separate layer and I just moved it up a little bit to um, ensure that I've got you know this more natural looking edge over here. Uh, one thing we could have done is, is added a tiny bit of feather in there before we started clone stamping. So um, in this case, maybe less than one pixel feather uh, would have helped when I was doing this clone stamp, but that's okay, we can always patch that up later. So now that we have that, I'm just going to merge that layer down. I think that's going to work okay. And then we're basically just going to use our uh, lasso tool, just make a quick um, selection around this. Don't have to be super accurate with this. All right. And what we're going to do is, once again, use Content Aware Fill. So uh, Shift F5 or Function Shift F5 if you're on a uh, MacBook Pro or any MacBook, really. Uh, again, use Content Aware. Make sure that's selected. Click OK. And that's going to get rid of our object for us. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job of it. A um, couple of little things that we need to patch up here with a little bit of clone stamp. Or we can use something like um, the Healing Brush tool. So we can just select Healing Brush, Sample from Nearby and just kind of tidy that up a little bit. You could probably use spot removal for this as well. But just a, a few quick little dabs and that's gone. So again, making progress here now, we've gotten rid of the majority of it up here. And again, sadly, that's pretty much the easy part. Uh, unfortunately, as we get down here, it gets a little bit harder. So the next thing we are going to look at is we're going to look at actually using Content Aware to get rid of the main portion of this and then we're going to look at various strategies to fill in whatever's left over because um, again content aware is not going to do a great job with an object like this but it's going to get us pretty close. So we're going to make a selection around this particular block over here again I'm just going to use polygonal lasso tool just get you know as close as we can really because we don't want to remove more than we really need to. And you could use other tools in here. You could use the magnetic lasso tool. That should work pretty well as well. Um, but I'm not going to obsess over making this selection absolutely spot on. Um, in fact, I want to leave a little bit of extra area to be covered over here. So we've got that roughly uh, done there. And uh, essentially, we're just going to, again, use Content Aware Function Shift F5. And let's see where that gets us. So you know what? Not too bad. Um, you know, for areas like this, again, it's it's better because we have a fairly smooth surface around it. Um, up here, it just had to kind of make up pixels, and you know, it really doesn't know what's in there. So with that done, now we have to start dealing with some of these areas here of shadows um, and you know some of these little variations in the lines. So that's where we're going next. And I think I'm going to start with uh, filling in certain areas like this. Um, I guess it's a manhole cover or whatever it might be. So for that, um, what we can basically do is, again, we're going to use polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to take this side over here, and we're just going to create a selection. Just make sure your selection is always a little bit bigger than the object itself, um, so you have a little bit of buffer room. We can always mask that out. And essentially, we're going to hit Command-J to duplicate that, and hit Command-T. Then we're going to flip it horizontally, and then we're going to flip it vertically. So with that selected, now we're going to move that over to the other side. We're going to transform it so that it fits. And again, we don't want to use too much of it, so we basically just want to kind of, you know, align it in there. Yes, the lighting isn't perfect because technically we've flipped around uh, the lighting, but we can sort of blend that in in a way where uh, nobody will really notice that too much. So that's going to be pretty close. Hit OK, and I'm just going to nudge that down a little bit more. Okay, so let's just toggle that on and off. Let's see where we actually need to cover. So we really only need this one little bit over here. So I'm going to add a layer mask to that, select a brush. We're going to need a fairly small brush over here. Uh, and we're going to select black as our color, as our foreground color. 
take flow down to something that's fairly small, maybe around 20%. And we're going to start kind of just taking that out of certain areas. Again, just kind of toggling that on and off for reference points of you know where we need to be. Let's just see where we go out to. I don't want too far with that one. And I think that's pretty close. Uh, again, we've got other stuff that we're going to be doing to this uh, that's going to fix this up a little bit for us. Let's just bring that in. Now, one thing I do want to do, um, it looks like it should be a little bit darker on this side. So again, I'm just going to select our layer, hit Command L. That's going to bring up our Levels dialog. And if obviously, if you're on a PC, it's going to be a Control L. And we're just going to take this down uh, slightly here. We're just going to go to maybe around that level there just to help it out a little bit. Okay, so we've dealt with that easy little bit there. The next thing I want to do is uh, come up with some way to deal with these shadows. Now we could, uh, of course, cl uh, clone stamp, you know, all of this, and that's certainly an option. Um, we got a couple other strategies that we can do though. So let's just, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think we're going to be changing it, so I'm just going to merge that down. And now we're going to actually use a technique that we normally use within portraits um, called frequency separation to try and patch up some of these areas over here. So to do that, we're going to duplicate this layer twice. So we're going to name the top one um, high, and we're going to name the bottom one low. So now disable the top one, have the bottom one selected, the low layer selected, and we're going to blur this. So we're going to select Gaussian Blur. And the blur amount, you basically want to the point where uh, the texture on the actual sidewalk here is more or less gone. So, uh, you know, you don't want to do it, you don't want to make it too big because we actually want to make it as easy as possible to get rid of these edges as well. If you go with a very large blur radius, then that's going to come through as detail and we don't want that. So we just want to have it, you know, blur enough so that we get rid of all of the texture within the sidewalk itself. So I think a good level for that was around, you know, this five pixel mark or so. So I click OK on that. Then with the high one, we're going to re-enable that, change the blend mode to linear light, and then we are going to go to image, apply image. We're going to select our low layer as our source layer. We're going to make sure invert is checked off. Add should be our blend mode. Uh, scale is two, and we're going to have invert selected as well. And for whatever reason, Oh, you know what's happening? Uh, I think I've got a low layer in my sample over here, actually, when I was working on this before. Yes, I do. And that's what's causing problems. So let's just go ahead and undo what I just did there. And let's name this layer low, too, just to uh, avoid any sort of confusion. So let's just go back through that again. We're going to select low 2 as our source layer. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, essentially what we're going to do is, I'm just going to group this together. I'm just going to call this, uh, that was supposed to be a queue. There we go. And we are going to create a layer in between these two. And now we're going to select a brush. Again, we're going to make this um, a reasonable size here. Flow rate should be around 4 or 5%. And we're going to zoom in. And essentially, we're, this is not going to get us 100% of the way there, but it's going to be a good starting point. So what we're going to do is we're going to just hold down Option to sample a color, and we're going to start painting in here, and we're going to start blending out these colors. So essentially, we want to just start lightening up these shadow areas and blending in the color from the other side. And this technique is great uh, because we're still retaining the detail that we had within here, but we're, we're essentially covering up the color. So if you actually look in these areas here where they're they're merging, um, that edge is still going to show because it's part of the high frequency because anytime there's an edge it's obviously high frequency. So that's not going to get rid of that kind of stuff for us, but at least it's going to get us to a, a more even tonality and then we can deal with these edges uh, using clone stamp or something along those lines, but at least we don't have to cover the whole area. Now this is a bit tedious, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's going to take you a little while to get through all of this. 
and you just have to keep kind of sampling from various areas and covering and covering and you know don't worry if you don't get a hundred percent of the way there because we're going to use again some other strategies for getting it to a hundred percent so here again we just this shadow here looks like it's being cast from uh, some other light post i guess that was off the frame which you know again we can use frequency separation to get rid of this shadow here too uh, but for now we're just going to kind of even this out so it doesn't look like there's um, the shadow running from a non-existent light post And as you can see, you know, this is not perfect, but it's certainly getting us somewhere. Go away updates. So like I said, this edge is always going to stay, so don't even bother trying to get rid of it. We're going to just use other things to get rid of that. All right, so we've made some progress, and um, I don't know that I'm going to go all the way with this because I can imagine you're getting pretty bored of watching me actually do this. So you get the general idea. It's just like doing frequency separation on a portrait edit. Essentially, we're just, instead of doing it on a portrait, we're doing it on a landscape image. So just sampling all around and just painting in with a color that will blend nicely. And then we're going to just kind of move through the frame and, and take care of areas like this. And when I actually did this with the previous uh, image, of the one you, you just saw at the beginning of this tutorial, um, I had to go back and do this twice, actually, because once I um, sort of completed all my clone stamping, there was still a few areas that I wasn't too happy with, so I actually went back and uh, took care of those as well. And we see we've got some variation in the, in the rocks here, so we're going to take care of that later. Now we're going to shrink down our brush and just kind of get in here, create a nice smooth transition point between this, make it look as if that was never ever there. And by the way, in case you're curious how I'm moving around, just hold space bar and that will change the, um, the cursor to the hand and then you can just move around. So uh, it's a nice quick way of navigating around your image. So again, clearly not the most exciting thing in the world, and uh, looks like we've got some issues here. Now here we see that the texture is pretty messed up actually as well. It's not just an issue of um, of having you know different colors, but the texture is messed up. So we're gonna have to take a different strategy for that because obviously you know our texture is here in this high layer. So even if we fill in this color, um, which we can certainly do, uh, the texture is still not really gonna match. So um, we don't. It's not gonna fix the problem for us 100%. I and mean, we can blend this in a little bit just to make it easier down the road when we're doing our fixes, but it's, it's not certainly not an ideal solution. So we're just going to pretty much leave that for now. So like I said, this is never going to get you to a perfect result in a situation like this. Um, in certain images, it, it may indeed give you a really nice result. So it just kind of depends on the scenario. But I think I'm going to stop there on it because I think we're getting close enough and you certainly get the idea it's basically just a matter of spending you know a fair bit of time and, and going through this so let me just finish up this little bit here blending this all down and then we'll uh, we'll just take a look and see what kind of progress we've made So zooming out now, if we actually toggle this on and off, we see that, you know, it's still not perfect, but it actually 
took care of a lot of that shadowing. But, you know, again, we've got some textural problems here. Um, this we could probably still tweak a little bit. And then we have to get rid of this little fringe line at the end here. But again, making some progress. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, try and, rather than use clone stamp tool to kind of patch in these uh, these different areas here, we're going to just duplicate certain sections. Um, so we're going to start off with this area here that we, we saw we had some problems with the um, with the actual detail. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer of this. I'm going to have my frequency group selected. I'm going to hit uh, Command Option Shift E, and I'm just going to delete this uh, frequency separation layer just because uh, it takes up a lot of room. So we're going to just toggle that on off again just to see how far we come with that. And we're going to zoom into this area where we had problems with our texture. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make a selection, um, something like, maybe like this. And I may not use this much area, but you know it's always better to select too much rather than too little. And I'm just going to create a bit of feathering here if, in case I do want to blend that whole thing in. Uh, it just does some of the blending for me automatically. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to select uh, transform selection and we're going to move this down to let's say this area here. Now we have the option of either moving it this way or that way but I'd rather move it this way here and just kind of drag that down like so. And actually you know what I'm going to scale this up a little bit because uh, I want to make sure that I get this whole bottom portion. So let's just do something like that. Again, it's better to select too much rather than too little. So now that we essentially moved that over, I'm just going to hit Command J, and that's going to create a duplicate for us, but just make sure the, the correct layer is selected there. And we're going to just drag that over to here. And so again, uh, this is really just a matter of doing some alignment to get this correct. So we can scale this down using you know Transform Tool. Then we're going to, again, just keep nudging this so that we're aligned off of this side. And then we're going to just zoom out a bit. I'm just going to use my skew tool to nudge this up. And we're going to nudge this down maybe slightly. And then similarly on this side, we're just going to make an adjustment there. And overall, that's not too bad. Now, obviously, one problem is that it does look too dark. So once again, we're just going to use a curves adjustment. We're going to hit Option and click down to apply it as a clipping mask to that layer. And we're just going to brighten it slightly. So just to the point where, you know, it feels pretty good. And I may actually create another one to apply just to one side. So let's, let's actually do that. I'm going to go Curves again, once again, as a clipping mask. And we're going to brighten it even more so that it blends from this side here. We're going to hit Command I, so we're going to get rid of uh, that whole adjustment essentially. Select our gradient, make sure that white is our color, and we're just going to blend that in a little bit there. And now let's just take a look and see how much of that we actually need. So we don't need all of this, um, there's only a section that we need from that. So what we can do is we can go back in here, add a layer mask, and just blend out certain areas. So just uh, again, I'm going to select black as my foreground color and just get a bigger brush here and just going to take out some of this area here so that it blends a little bit nicer. Let's just toggle that on and off. Let's just make sure that we're not covering anything that we need. Actually up here we can probably blend this out to create a smoother transition. And again, I'm going to blend it out here because we didn't really need it there either. So, you know, all that really did was just restore some of the texture that we were missing over here. Now, as you can imagine, um, what I ended up doing, this is why I had a second pass at the frequency separation based mode that we had before uh, when I was originally doing this, because now that I have this, I can see that, you know what, it looks pretty good. We got the texture back, but now the colors don't quite blend. So what I would do again is at the end, once I've patched in all these areas, I'm going to create one more round of frequency separation and fill in the color gaps that I have between some of these different areas. So we're going to do something similar in areas like this over here. I can actually just 
pull out a snippet and just kind of cover uh, the different areas. So let's uh, let's grab this section over here. I'm just going to give you another example of how this would look here, and that's probably where we're going to more or less end up uh, because I can imagine that you know this is dragging on quite a bit, and you're probably getting really tired of watching me do this. It's it's certainly not the most entertaining thing in the world, and um, believe me, from where I'm sitting, it's not the most fun thing in the world either, especially when you're doing it for the second time. So, uh, really, what I wanted to do is just kind of show you the different strategies that we have for fixing some of these different things, and then you can imagine that we're just really just using those same strategies over and over again to finalize some parts of this image. So, I'm going to take this area over here. And uh, I'm just going to hit again Command J to duplicate that. We're going to use our Move tool. We're going to drag that over, and we're just going to kind of position it so that it looks okay. Hit Command T to scale this up. And again, you can use uh, you know some skew tools if you need to. Just kind of position this a little bit like that, and then we're going to skew this maybe down a tiny bit just to align that there something along those lines. Now again, this is obviously uh, again too uh, too bright, so same process goes. We just use our, again, I'm going to use levels in this case, but you could use just as well use curves, apply as a clipping mask, and we're going to just kind of adjust this down a little bit. Well, that's going to be pretty close, I guess. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's going to be good enough. Now, again, what I'm really trying to do here is just bring back some texture. That's why I figured at the end of all this, I'm going to need to do another round with the frequency separation to blend these colors. These updates will just not leave me alone. There we go. So, um, again, we brought back the texture over here. Now, we do want to kind of make that a little bit smoother. So, once again, we've got our, uh, we're going to add a layer mask in there. We're going to select a black brush, and we're just going to kind of blend out some of these corners over here because obviously that's just a little bit too sharp the way it kind of comes together. And it's just going to make it easier for us when we're doing the uh, the frequency separation later. So let's just get rid of some of those corners. And again, that's obviously not perfect. As you can see, um, if we toggle this on and off, it's not great, but at least it brought back some of the texture. And then what we can essentially do is go back for another round of frequency separation and start filling that in again. Over here, uh, for areas like this, we can just use something as simple as clone stamp um, just to fill in that edge. So I'll just create a new layer over here. We're going to select our clone stamp tool on light and blend mode. Uh, I've got flow at around 30%, which should be okay. And then we just kind of, you know, gently polish through those areas over there. And so as you can see, you know that that took care of that particular area there, and uh, and essentially we just carry on with that. Now things like these light streams over here, that is really just a matter of again just duplicating parts. So what I would probably do is just select this part using again pulling the lasso tool, select this, create another copy, move it on top, uh, use the transform tool uh, using the perspective or the uh, warp or the skew. Um, adjustments to just kind of fit that into place. Another thing you can do is use liquify to kind of nudge this up. So we could, for example, go into here, go to filter, liquify, zoom into that area. Now this here, for example, I wouldn't bother liquifying that. I would just copy um, one of the areas. And actually, you know what? I think we filled that in. It's just um, we're liquefying on that base layer, which didn't have the, the layer over top that we fixed already. So that, that area has actually been fixed for us already because we did exactly that. We cut out this area and moved it over top. So with this, you know, we can just kind of nudge this up and, uh, and fix that that way. It really depends on, you know, what's, uh, what's going to give you the best result. I would probably just opt to do this you know, making duplicate layers and, and sort of covering and, and blending ba back in. But uh, let's just see. You know, that's that's not too bad. Uh, at least it gives us something. But again, I would probably just cut this out and move it over top. So uh, let's just zoom out a little bit here. Let's um, let's just see what we've done so far. So if I'm just going to group all of this together here, let's just take all this fun stuff. Hit Command G. 
So basically, we've we've gotten to this point, and um, in the previous edit, I I kind of got to here. So uh, I filled in all of this extra stuff using that one more frequency separation round. But once again, I'm assuming you don't want to see me go through all of that again. The process is exactly the same, but now we have a little bit more texture, um, slightly smoother surfaces to work off of, and that will get us to that point. So I hope you found that useful. I know we introduced a ton of different techniques here for, for covering these sorts of objects. And um, you know, if you're still here and you haven't fallen asleep watching me do this, then, then that's great. And um, uh, again, hope you learned something and, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot. We'll see you next time.